Hey yo, my Planet Zoo friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to some more Planet Zoo Let's Play. So in the last episode, we did our terrarium and our little food court. Not the best, but it's something. So I got some stuff to go over with you guys today. Loving the comments in the series so far. So thank you guys to everyone who's been leaving a comment and uh, providing some helpful information. So we got some learning to do and uh, information to share. So here on YouTube, Cindy and Joe Eden say, hey Johnny, sure did miss you uh, while you're away. Hopefully you got the needed rest you deserve. Glad you're back. Love all the vids. Um, and asked, you asked what enclosure we wanted to see next. How about the elephants? You can connect them to the other side where the water is since elephants love water. Hope you have a great day and keep those videos coming. You got it, Cindy. So I would love to do the elephants over here, Cindy. However, take a look at this. This is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I want to, I want to kind of talk about this for a second, but you can see there are elephants available, but they require a lot of conservation credits. And it, from the beta, I don't think we can earn them because I've been logging in daily. I did not get any. Um, I don't know where the weekly challenges are. There's no community challenges. So all we can do is hopefully sell some animals on the marketplace and release them into the wild. And hopefully we get some conservation credits through that. But what I do like about this system is that a lot of the rare animals, such as the elephants, because if we, if we do search by species and we go to like the uh african elephant you can see that none of them are available for cash so again some of these rare rarer species are only available through conservation points such as these lions and you know uh elephants and what have you so because of that we are currently limited to the cash species only and as, and I'll, I'll show you the list of them here so if you guys have suggestions of what you want to see built next we're gonna have to do it from the cash pool of animal species so we are limited at the this very moment now hopefully we can sell some of these release them to the wild and earn some of those conservation points having said that i do like the franchise mode and i do like the conservation credit system because it allows you to build up a smaller zoo with more common animals and work your way up to those rare endangered species so i think that's pretty fun it's a good concept and uh, i i can definitely see the potential of franchise mode here and uh keeping your park growing as opposed to sandbox mode where you're just like i'm gonna build what i want to build so i do like it i think it's a, a nice spin on the game and it's a good mode so having said that we're going to be looking into something new for this episode and we'll get into that a little bit later uh for now i want to go over some new things that i've learned based off of your comments so i was having issues with the uh people not feeding the bears people are saying that the food system isn't working in the beta uh that seems kind of problematic because now my bears nutrition is suffering but I, I still they still are getting fed even though we're not visually seeing it so that's a thing so Mason O'Connor here says, Hey Johnny, love the planet zoo. When are you build up? Uh, when you're building a path for enclosures, there's a wall button that allows you to be straight or curved. Also on the second tab of the wiki, the bears, it looks like it gives the wall height with the donation bins. There are educational signs and placing them close to the bins will get guests to donate more money by setting up the an assigned roster to the enclosure keeper will constantly focus on animals instead of wandering around. Although there was that feeding problem the, uh, for the animals in the base hope this helps excited to see new content all right thank you so much mason o'connor and with that information we have added in some of these uh information signs so as you can see here there's these tvs that are powered and it teaches you about the bears and we put the donation bin right next to it so hopefully that increases why why is it capturing my uh hold on i don't know why it's capturing my steam friends list on the uh, monitor here that's a little bit strange anyways we uh we put the the information panel there yeah see showing friends showing up on my OBS, it never does this. I'm going to go offline on Steam. Oh no, I can't go offline on Steam because franchise mode is not available offline. <laughs> That would be terrible. So we've also added in more information panels over here. Now these do require power. So we want to uh, make sure we've got them within our power region. So if we look at our power. So I did want to put some over on the bridge, but it's just unfortunately out of range near this donation bin. When we do expand the power, I will add in more of those information signs on the backside as well. So we just need some time to build up our zoo a bit more so we can add some more of these in. So thank you for that tip. That will hopefully increase our revenue that we've been struggling with. and the 
Same thing goes over here. We have the exhibit panels that you can place down and it teaches us about the frogs, the poisonous frogs that we have in here, which should also hopefully increase donations as well as the Goliath toads. So helpful information there by Mason O'Connor. And then he also mentioned about the pathing system or uh, should I say the uh, work zones. So I made a work zone here. I don't know how to look at my work zone rosters. Maybe if I just make a new one. So yeah, you can see the work zones. Work zone one is the grizzly bear. So I, I selected everything in this region and that is our grizzly bear region. So Cruz Henson is working the grizzly bear area. So as we expand the park, he's going to only tend to the grizzly bears, which is also very helpful. So we'll look into the uh, straight and curved walls as mentioned when we go to build our next enclosure and see if we can get these cornered walls to work because we were struggling with that in the first episode. JB Gameplay says, uh, press spacebar for more grid wall creating and you can see the, oh, the wall options at the right corner in curvy mode. The better know what environment the bears like. You can put a filter of continents and biome. That worked out for me. So we were struggling with like what the bears wanted. Now if we go into the, well, first of all, we look at the bear and we see, you know, what he likes. The continents is North America and the biomes are these. I was doing it wrong where I was either filtering by the biomes. So what you want to do, this is a pro tip, you want to go to the, the three biomes that he likes, the temperate, uh, the taiga, and the tundra. And then you also want to add the continent, which is the North America. Now we've filtered out all this. Now this is everything that the bear loves. So you want to do that and filter from this and then go ham and you shouldn't have any problems with the bear complaining about about the uh, habitat. As you can see, there's still a few complaints here with the uh, mangrove trees and a couple reeds that we have over here, but I like the way the reeds look, so I'm gonna leave it. But yeah, if you want the bear to be perfectly happy, this, everything here should work. Maple trees and all that good stuff. Henderosa pines, beautiful. So really good tip there. Uh, I, I had the right idea, but I should have just combined the two filters together. So that is great to know that uh, it's not actually as difficult as I thought it would be. Uh, I I forgot to mention in the last message by Mason O'Connor here, they were talking about the Zoopedia showing the fences for the grizzly bears. I don't know how I missed this, but you can see here that the minimum habitat requirement is 750 meters squared. Now that's kind of hard to tell in Planet Coaster what 750 meters squared is. So that's something we're gonna have to learn over time. They don't they don't care about climbing things. They don't really care about water apparently, but I do have water in there and they are swimming. It does tell you your temperature here. So I was like, how, how do I get my temperature just right? So anywhere between minus 10 to minus 28 degrees Celsius. Is that minus? Really? So we can see here that these are set at zero. The temperature change is minus 37 degrees Celsius. So that should help uh, get your temperatures just right for your animals. So going back to that Zoopedia, on the second tab here, natural habitat, it does say grade four fences. Now this person, uh, Mason said here, it tells you what height the fence is meant to be, but it doesn't. Now, if I look at a different animal here, like the gems bock, it, it requires a minimum of four feet, 4.12 feet. Now I'm, I'm kind of confused that they say feet in this and then the actual game is done meters. So hopefully they change that in the actual release of the game because you now have to do the conversion yourself. I'm on the metric system. The game is on the metric system, but the information is delivered on the Imperial system, which is kind of strange to me. And you can also see here, uh, they're doing meters. So why would they say 4.12 feet? A little bit strange there, but it also says here they want a grade two fence. With our grizzly bears, it says a grade four fence. But if we go into our, uh, if we go into our barriers, none of the barriers are listed as grades. They don't actually tell us what the grade of the fence is. So if anybody has a tip or a pointer on that, the help button isn't working. It would be nice to know what these grades are. Now, I'm assuming like corrugated metals, like your, your highest grade, grade four, or maybe that's grade five. I don't know. Well, let's count them out. Like hedge, that's definitely like a one. Wood would probably be a two. Brick, oh no, we have cor uh, chain link fences. So maybe hedge is one, chain's two, wood is three, four is brick, and five is corrugated. That would make the most sense to me. I don't really know for certain, but yeah, it would be nice to know what grade they are. So we have a brick wall. It doesn't tell us what grade it is, but going back to uh, the area that we need for our uh, grizzly bears, we have 3,600 square meters and they require and a 800 square meters of water if we look at the grizzly bear itself you can see here it's 2800 square square meters out of 
850. That means we're over our quota. So that's good. We've given our bears tons of space. Now, what I am curious to know is if this increases in number when it increases in capacity. Now, once we get like six bears, seven bears in here, is this gonna slowly, they're gonna want more and more space. So we gave them so much space, like threefold of what we actually needed. So if we would have just made it like this big, that would have been more than enough. But when the bear population increases, I'm sure this number is going to increase. I don't exactly know. We'll have to find out. But yeah, this is good information. So again, going to the Zoopedia, going over into the second tab here, you can kind of get an idea of what we want to do. So we can get that information before we go planning our next area. So those are all the tips and tricks by you guys in the comment section. Once again, thank you everybody for that information. I think that's very informative. We learned a lot based off of your comments. And with that, we should go forward and try to build another enclosure. Now we had the request for elephants. We can't do that yet. So maybe what we'll do is like, we'll, we'll make a hippo area over here because hippos also love the water. So maybe that's what we'll do there. But for now, I kind of want to do something small and simple and we're going to go over here. So let's go to the animal trading center and see what we have available to us. I think what we're going to do, honestly, hmm, I kind of want to do the timber wolf, but we're going to we're going to mess around with the warthogs. I like the idea of doing warthogs. So we're going to buy a female, a male, are there any other available. We can add in more later and we can also hope that they breed. We're going to we're going to do a little bit of a smaller build today because we went so big with the bears and we've already eaten up some time going over those tips and tricks. So here's the uh, two warthogs that we have available to us. Um, here's the stats of the genetics and breeding. We have a very, very small female and a big boy. <laughs> He's a big boy. All right, let's go over to the Zoopedia and learn about the animal. Let me know it down in the comments below. Do you guys like me reading out the backstory and learning more about the, the animals here? Or do you want just to see me building? Because I do find this information quite uh, informative and I like learning about the animals myself. So I'm just going to continue doing this until unless anyone has any complaints about it. So let's get in to the common warthog. Population in the wild is a quarter million. The common warthog or Ficochorus? <laughs> Africanus lives throughout the sub-Saharan Africa in a wild variety of environments. Although not currently endangered, the species is vulnerable to drought and hunting as they are often viewed by humans as pests. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, they can spread disease to livestock. Secondly, they can destroy crops on farmlands when rooting with their tusks. This has resulted in some pockets of the population being wiped out. The common warthog has a large head with a coarse mane and hair and distinct distinctive tusks. The upper tusks are large, thick, blunt, while the lower tusks are sharp, short and sharp. Warthogs also have large, have large cartilaginous protrusions in their cheeks. The males average 1.3 and 1.5 meters in length and between 60 and 150 kilograms in weight, whereas the females average shorter and lighter, averaging 0.9 to 1.3 meters long and 45 to 75 kilograms in weight. Now they do alternate between kilograms and pounds which is also strange also when they're doing between feet and meters so a little bit of inconsistencies in the information throughout this game so far so here's the region sub-saharan africa and the biomes here are the savanna and rainforest so if we could buy our filters together we should be able to build our warthog area quite easily um, looking at this they need a grade two fence with 3.3 feet. So grade two is pretty low. I'm, I'm assuming a chain link fence should work for us here. So we're gonna try the chain link fence and see how that goes for us. And they like eight, between eight to 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so looking at our grizzly bear, it's uh, minus 10 to 28 degrees Celsius. So there's it just, it looks a little bit strange. We're using the minus is also a dash. So there you have it. Getting back to the warthog. Social needs. Warthogs have a complex social structure. Mature females tend to live in inter live in interrelated groups with their offspring however year old piglets may leave their mother's group and live in sibling groups before splitting up as they get older the young females usually return to their mother's group where 
whereas the young males will form bachelor herds until they are old and strong enough to become solidary. Uh, reproduction. Male warthogs have two strategies for mating. These called tending and roaming. Uh, and tending, a tending male will join a sounder of females during the mating season and block other males from coming close, as well as try to stop females going to other males. Roaming, so they're very controlling. <laughs> <laughs> Roaming males search for multiple sounders and attempt to mate with females from the groups, often competing with the tending males. The female common warthogs are pregnant for five to six months before giving birth to three to seven piglets in their burrow. Uh, these young piglets reach maturity in two years old, although males are unlikely to mate for the first time until they reach four to five years old. All right. And here's a look at all of their uh, information. So the group size is one to 10, up to one males, up to nine females uh bachelor group size bachelor group size is one to two female bachelor size is one to ten so based off this information i feel like we're gonna be okay getting one male and a whole bunch of females that should be okay uh and then we won't have too many uh guys duking it out but they should breed quite quickly based off of the uh five what was it five to six months and then they breed three to seven piglets so it might be okay to just leave our two in there for now and maybe add in a second female at some point because once they have uh because once they have their batch of piglets we're gonna have a lot of uh warthogs here on our hands so we have the fun facts here the name of the group for the warthogs is sounder or sounding the upper tusks of the common warthog can grow 25 centimeters long common warthogs sleep in abandoned burrows of other animals usually add barks. Wow, that's interesting. So not only are they controlling, they just freaking snatch other people's homes. <laughs> it's freaking... <laughs> They're bandits! The tusks of the warthogs shear against each other, making the bottom tusks razor sharp. Warthogs use these for attacking predators. Common warthogs back into their burrows, so they fa are facing outwards and can charge at predators if they are at risk. <laughs> they just lunge out of the burrows. Interspecies enrichment. Common warthogs will be enriched by sharing their habitat with these animals. Oh, wow. Interesting. I did not plan for this, everybody. And that includes the elephants, the buffalo. Wow. Okay, so we kind of want to put them in like a big open area and this does answer my question of can we can we have interspecies mingling within uh, enclosures and that's definitely true. So what we would want eventually is a big open area where all these animals are sharing the land together. But for now we're going to just create like a small little pig pen is what we'll do and later on as they develop and breed and grow we'll, we'll release them into a, a bigger area that we can develop. I mean, we don't even have access to elephants or buffalo, I don't believe, but we can have like the ostrich, the antelope. Uh, I think we can get z zebra and uh, springbok. So we'll make like this nice open area where these guys can roam around and we'll let some warthogs chase them about. Boom. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our chain link fence from the looks of this, a grade two fence of 3.3 feet. What is 3.3 feet meters? 1.005 meters. So we just wanna go over one, um, one meter chain link fence should suffice to keep our little warthogs in. So let's try this out. First of all, we're going to need a uh, pathway for our workers to get back here. So, oh, you know what? I didn't put the bathroom near our food court. Put that in here. All right. So we want a pathway for our uh, employees to get back to this area that we're gonna have staffing them. And we want that staffing area to be somewhat far away from our food court because staffing areas make people sad for some reason. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have this kind of separation between this stuff. So the guests should be able to kind of watch through a chain link fence, I would imagine. Is watching pigs while you eat <laughs> the greatest idea? <laughs> so while we're on the barriers, See, we have the curved barrier top habitat parameters. Someone was saying you could turn curved off straight sections. There we go. And it doesn't work. You can't do right angles. So you still have to curve it, which is strange. You know what I'm going to do? Build this back part up. So how much space did we need for these? We need 300 meters squared. And this was 3,000 roughly. So we need like a tenth of this. So I think having like this area here should be enough. All right, we got, we got cornered right angles here. 
We got we got it to work, so that's good. This is our area. We don't uh, want these trees in there, so we don't know if we like if they like them yet. And then we want to uh, continue our pathway right to the back. So I don't. I think there's a typo in the Zoopedia because the common warthog says 3.3 feet. But is that supposed to be meters? It doesn't, I don't think, hmm. Three feet is very, very, very shallow. Even one meter. But if we edit the barrier, it's two meters. So in theory, it only needs to be a meter high. But doesn't that seem very low? I feel like a war warthog could get over that. But based off of math, it said 1.05 meters. So we're just gonna play it safe and do 1.5 meters and see how that goes. A little nervous about that. So yeah, they shouldn't be able to get through a chain link fence, hopefully. And now it is time to, uh, oh, we need, we need a gate first. Habitat gate airlock. Well, the gate has a minimum height. You know what? We're going to make the barrier two meters. Just aesthetics. Just because that door has a, a minimum height of two meters and it just seems to make sense. So yeah, we're going to have our pen back here. We need a, uh, and what's the difference between a keeper hut and a small staff building? Do they not have information on this? Well, I know that the animals come out of this building, which is the trade center. That's not helpful. Research center. I think the keeper hut's where they feed the animals. So yeah, that's what I'm looking to build. So we'll put a keeper hut down there. I think the staff building is like where they take their lunch breaks and stuff. Keeper hut small. Now, if we have employees, I mean, they should still, I'm hoping they'll still run down this path and bring our uh, war warthogs to these medical bays because these were really expensive and I, I would hate to have to put these everywhere. Uh, the fact that these freaking paths are not adjacent is bugging me. So we're gonna curve this. That's better-ish, I guess. Whatever. All right, I disabled my Steam uh, notification, so hopefully there's no more pop-ups in the top right corner that was driving me nuts. So here's our enclosure area. Let's get our animals transferred. So this is the holding area. We grab these two. Can we shift select them? Hmm. Okay, we can't. We're gonna move you here. We're gonna move you. So let's see if they come on out. Hey oh, there's one. So it looks like the veterinarians and the keepers also uh, like it. They, it grabs any employee to bring over the animals, which is nice. Bring them on in. Probably should have brought the door a little closer now that I think about it. Well, no, I want those buildings as far away as possible from the food court. Otherwise, people will get unhappy. They're just gonna have to run a little further. There we go. Hello! <laughs> run! <laughs> All right, let's figure out what we need to do to make these little guys happy. Now, how's our money doing? It looks terrible, but uh, that's because we're building stuff. All right, well, hopefully this brings in some monies. So, habitat. Let's look at what we need to uh, build up the terrain. So they like short grass, they like long grass, they like soil, a little bit of rock and a little bit of sand. Now, didn't they like burrows? I think we should try to make a little burrow for them. Now, is there a way? Yeah, let's try to make a burrow. What I wanna try to do here is flatten to terrain and actually lead the bur, like make it a burrow. I wanna burrow these little zerglings. Flatten that top out, flatten that bottom out. The slope isn't quite right. It's a little bit steep, isn't it? Hopefully that's okay, though. Smooth that out. Smooth all this out. Oh, putting holes in the back. Yeah. I need to do more terraforming before I put the fences in, in the future. Just because it gets a, a little bit chiseled in the back, and it creates some, some strange deformations. It's all right, though. All right, we have a little burrow. <laughs> Literally looks like a burrow. Hopefully the uh, warthogs can get up and down this ramp quite okay. I like that though. I mean, it's a little ugly looking, but we'll, we'll dress it up. So one thing to note here, this is an 1800 meter <laughs> area and it only required 300. So again, we overshot this by what, six times. Yeah, six times too large than what we needed, but that's okay. You know what? We're uh, we're leaving lots of room for breeding, and if we really want, we can put some gazelles in here or something. So we'll see how it goes. So they want some short grass. Let's put that around the burrow here. They like their soil. I think we should put some uh, heavy... Well, let's put the soil down in the burrow here and some heavy soil up front. 
We'll make this like a mud mound. We'll put some uh, rough rock up on top of the mound here. Now they do like a little bit of sand, so we'll put some sand here at the entrance. Maybe on the corners here as well. I want a little bit more short grass. All right, let's check on the other welfare of our... Oh, well, they need uh, nourishment and food. So let's make sure that they're getting fed here. Oh, you know what? Let's make sure we get some research going. Yes, Warner research. Why is it not working? That's uh, not working. Oh, you have to click onto it. Now let's make sure our bears get some research too. And these bears are fighting way too much. Always injured. Okay, we're going to put the feeding trough over by the uh, door because we've been having issues with the keepers not really feeding them. Put some water over there too. I'll put a small feeder trough over here just so the guests can come check them out. Now the beds and shelters. Let's put a uh, large one right in our cave. Oh, maybe... Yeah, that works. Look at a small one in there. Put a bunch in here. There we go. I quite like that. Alrighty, what else do they need? Habitat. They need the plants. We need plants. Let's get the plants going. So, this is where we made our mistake last time. Let's not make our mistake again. So we're going to go into our filters. We're going to reset all the filters. Our biome is going to be grassland and tropical. Grassland, tropical, and we're going to go to continent Africa. Boom. That's everything we should need to decorate our pig pen. Ooh, this is exciting. You know what? There was a, a mud pen in the tutorial. I think that's something we have to research as we go deeper into the research of our warthogs. We should be able to get like a mud pit. Now, I want to have like a little... I don't know if they like the water as much. Actually, isn't, we should be able to find out, right? Animal has no preference for water. They don't really care about the water, but I was thinking it would be kind of nice if we could make like a little muddy swimming pond. Let's just try it for the sake of it. Just a tiny little rough water area. Ugh, it's kind of big. Still too big. That's not bad. I'll put heavy soil in there. All right, is that enough? Decorations, habitat, coverage. We've over covered. Let's give her some of these ferns. I felt like they were a little too green. Over coverage is a thing. All right, we're getting rid of the ferns. So they actually like it open. Okay, we can get rid of some more stuff back here. Still over decorated. How are we doing now? All right, just the right amount. Perfect. What, they don't like the reeds? They should because the filter is set properly. Whatever. The reeds are staying. I like the reeds. I like at them running around having a grand old time. Okay, let's see what else they need. Nutrition. They're starving. Let's call the keeper over. Okay, the keeper is there. They're gonna get fed in a second here. So, enrichment, we're just waiting. Uh on research. Other than that, we're doing great. Our welfare is great. What we should probably look into doing is seeing if we can get another female in here. Only a male available. We, we just can't afford. Alright, we'll just have to check back in. I don't want another male. Okay, he's using the den. <laughs> or she is. This is great. Look at them go. <laughs> There's food. It's very shady over here. Okay. Oh, shoot. We need donation bins. I'm going to move the picnic tables out more. So we do have power in this area, luckily. So we can uh, put all these screens and stuff in. So let's try this. So once you place the screen down, you can select the animal. And it only shows the ones you have available. You put it upside down. There we go. And is there any other information we can give them? Conservation information board? Sure, let's get one of those. Put that there. And what kind of information? Yeah, let's just pick climate change or something. Uh, maybe not. Poaching an exotic pet trade. There we go. Cool. I think that should do quite nicely. Oh, an education speaker. Let's do that. I think it, we want it near the donation bin, don't we? 
We can choose... Oh, we can educate about warthogs on the speakers. Very nice. Look at that. Education speakers, donation bins, information about the warthogs, and some uh, conservation info. Boom. That's a pretty nice little area. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that tree, but whatever. The warthogs like it. That's all that matters, right? Now, hopefully this attracts more guests. Now we will, uh, when we expand the park, we'll have like another viewing side over here. Uh, I don't know if we'll go on the back side, just because, I mean, I don't really think I'm going to have the park go all the way out here. Well, you never know, but it's an option. Holy moly, these maps are huge. Oh my god, I got a lot of work to do. I feel like I've been playing for a long time, and all I got is this. What is this? <laughs> well, we're starting to fill. Um, we've got some shape going, like, I like the uh, terrarium going through to the food court and warthog area. It's cute, it's quaint, it's off to the side. I didn't want any big main attraction. I mean, yeah, warthogs aren't the most exciting uh, creature or animal. <laughs> but uh, from here, we can kind of expand outward. We can have a path going this way, and then we can start filling in this middle area and maybe get out to some hippos or something. So we will be able to now kind of like bring the park forward so uh, I like that and you know we can expand off the side here so I think that'll be the plan going forward into the next episode we'll we'll try to build something here ish we'll expand that path pathward going outward and uh, and then yeah we we could just connect and fill around that but we're gonna need something in here I'm gonna be keeping an eye on the comments because in the first episode I did ask you guys what kind of animals you would like me to uh, would you like me to build and uh, you know the only person that said anything so far was uh, asking for elephants and again we can't do that unless we get the conservation credits so here's another look at them I mean this episode might be released in a day or something but I'll, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on the comments, so hopefully someone mentions what they would like to see next. I'm going to go refresh and see if there are any requests. Um, let's sort it by species so we can see what's available. So there's tons of buffalo, some uh, giant turtles. I think having a small little turtle area might be cool. What we could do with that, uh, I'll show you in a second. Let's just keep looking through these. Ostrich, more turtles. Okay, I mean, we could put a bunch of turtles together. The peafowls, we could have a cute little peafowl area. Uh, I definitely try, I want to play around with the monkeys and do like a, a, a jungle gym because that's like a neat little aspect to the game. Uh, wolves are cool. So, yeah, we'll play around with that. So, uh, I'm kind of leaning towards turtles and mm, peafowls, maybe. Just uh, some small filler stuff because we do need to make that money. We're losing some mad cash here. Holy moly. Our money's just plummeting. Oh my god. Pause it. We can't lose any more money. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I mean, uh, donation bins, education. Uh, we have shops. I don't think we would need any more shops than that. It's, I mean, okay, there's a lineup for Looney Bloons. I could get a second Looney Bloons out here or something like that. Uh... Yeah, there's a lineup for that. So maybe we can consider doing another Looney Bloons and uh, bathroom somewhere else. Some, yeah, somewhere over here. But in order to do that, we need to build out, I feel. So, yeah, what I was, I was thinking is, like, we could have, like, another area here. And that will be for the turtles. And they can kind of go in the water. I don't know. Or we could just build a pond in the middle and have turtles there around a pond. That might be cool. And then the, the hippos over here. And then something for the pea fowls would be just like make a little hedge maze area. Uh, yeah, fill it up. Small little area for pea fowls. Peacocks. Yeah. Bears are doing great. Have we? Do we have any cubs yet? The toys bouncing around in there. No, those are turds. Those are not <laughs> cubs. It takes a while, doesn't it? Can we tell if they're pregnant? That's Varden. Uh, 11 years old. Come on. Their nutrition 
is suffering. Uh, and so is their water cleanliness. Why do our keepers suck at their jobs? I'll have to look into this stuff after the episode and see if I could just clean up the management. I would like to know... Adult population is... Oh, that's why they keep fighting. <sighs> There's too many adults. Look at that. We have to sell our females. Okay, so the area is way too large. And... <laughs> this whole area is for like two bears. We have to get rid of someone. Okay, well... Let's find out who's the least healthiest. Well, there's also... Jeez. Where's our other bear? Zoe. Oh, she's a bronze rating. What is this? Animal appeal, 3,500. 3,700. 3,700. So, we... Zoe's the winner here. She's the prize... Prize bear. So, we're gonna have to, uh get rid of these unfortunately so how do we do that send an animal to storage and trade center womp 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 bye bye so now adult population is it gonna change it's not changing well why 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 I do not understand do I have to actually get rid of them from the animal trade center <sighs> Unfortunately, we, we do have to get rid of them. What does this button do? It would be nice to send them out into the wild or something. So, we are going to trade them back in for money. And our money is just plummeting. Okay, it's not plummeting as hard anymore. Okay, there we go. Adult population is good. Just updated. So, you basically want to learn from my mistakes here. The area that I built is literally like three and a half times bigger than it needed to be so you could probably make a third of this and two bears one female one male adults and that's it they don't they'll fight otherwise and now that they're happy they might start breeding and having cubs on top of that might be okay so learn from my mistakes this whole area for two bears is just simply ridiculous. That would have probably helped with our money issues because there's a lot of upkeep with all of this area. So, yeah. I guess I just made the same mistake over here. Let's see what their population's like. So, it looks like they can they can do with more, but they are happy with uh, where they're at. So, we can add more females in. Let's see if... Whoa. Research collected. Grizzly bear. Um, hey, why did you stop researching? I have some issue with the research. They're only doing one at a time for some reason. I must have to get a second research facility. But we did, uh, we did get something for our bears. So let's see if that helps anything. Habitat. Species. Grizzly bear. There's nothing new in here. Okay. Oh, well. So what was I going to do? We are going to check on uh, Animal Trade Center to see if there's any more. Just a male. Now, they did say they're okay with females in large numbers. So we're just going to hang in there, wait for another female, uh, and see if we can fill this area up. But it's uh, look, the biggest thing I'm struggling with and I need to learn is this the, the square meters. So if we look at a path, for example, we should be able to tell, like, in here we can go, okay... The width is four meters. So that's a four meter section there. So if we take that and like, you know, maybe, maybe what we do is go length five meters. So is that really five meters? Or is that just an arbitrary number? Because, oh, it's five times four meters. So wait, right? Is that 20 meters? I'm guessing. So having said that, 20 meters, their living space, 300 meters. It doesn't seem right, because that'd be 10 of those spots. Math, why can't I figure this out? 
be I was just trying to think like I could measure this, but that doesn't seem correct to me. So I, I need to find a system to kind of like square out an area and go, okay, this is 300 square meters. Let's build no bigger than this and put the animals that we need in this area and, and leave it at that. No more super... I hear protesters? No. Uh, yeah, no more super big areas for so few animals. Our money is tanking again. I think this zoo is going to go under eventually. Uh, hopefully in the next episode we can save it by adding in more small sized pens with uh, animals and we'll try to build up something as quickly as possible. But yeah, this is pretty difficult, I must say. It's, it's a big learning curve. Like if I were to restart, yeah, my bear area would be a third of the size. That would probably help on money. We, we would have made this like a third of the size. So I can definitely compact things a little bit more. Um, but still having fun nonetheless and uh it's it's a it's a learning experience so we're just figuring things out as we go and going bankrupt in the process <laughs> so there you guys go that's the uh warthog den enclosure and that's that's pretty much where we're going to leave it for this episode i think and we'll figure out something for the next one and start filling this uh area in between here up. Boom. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to smash that like button. If you're new here, subscribe for more daily Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo content. And if you'd like to support the show, please check out my Patreon page and as well, come join us on Discord. We are open to the public and uh, Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo all in one Discord. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now. <laughs>